All right, so greetings from Maryland now. I was just down in West Virginia with Todd from, he's back there somewhere, Todd from Appalachian History Detectives. We were at the Fort Edwards Foundation watching the French and War uh, reenactment, which is pretty cool actually, all the, unif all the old period uniforms and stuff. So on my way home, we decided to stop at Fort Frederick. He kind of came up here with me. So this place is, check it out back there. You know, I've been showing you the forts back in Pennsylvania in my French and Indian War series, and they look nothing like that. I mean, there's absolutely nothing left of the, all the forts we've got the chance to look at or, or whatever. They're nothing like this. I mean, this is, this is huge stone walls or anything. So this will be pretty cool. So there is the man himself, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Appalachian History Detectives. And they, him and uh, the Aqua Trigger are doing a series on the French and Indian War too. So it's kind of, I, I, I didn't, you know, They're none of us, it. yeah, none of us started them. I mean, I, I've been watching, I started mine before I started watching their videos and they started, it was yeah. kind of interesting. I was like, hey, because even Aqua Trigger was at some places I was at recently. And yeah, and they're, they, you guys found that you're doing it up, was it? Uh, well, I found yours on, you were doing Fort Necessity. Yeah, and then... As soon as I saw that, I'm like, man, I gotta get in touch with... And uh, then what was the name of the fort you guys found? Fort Upper Track. Yeah. So check out, it's Appalachian History Detectives and the Aqua Trigger. They're uploading videos. There's this lost French and Indian War fort that they found. Well, the state... It's thinks, in West Virginia. Yeah. The state had a place they said it was, but they kind of found the... The real Yeah. Place. That's kind of interesting, so... But it's nothing like... Once again, it's nothing like this one, though. This thing is amazing. Yeah, in a moment I'll walk up to these walls so you can see how big they are. I mean, this is a seriously big fort. So let me set you down and I'll walk up to this. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of this place too. It was built, you know, for the French and Indian War. It was built in 1756. But none of the fort sites I've been to so far like has ever been anything like this one. Wow. That's how big, that's how big these walls are. I could probably put in there one or two people on top of me. Yeah, so that should give you some perspective as to how tall these walls are. I was talking with Todd over there, he, he mentioned you know, the French and the Indians, they never even tried to take this fort, and you can see why. I mean, most of the forts we've been to have just, what they only had was like those, like a log palisade. But this is, this is pretty cool. And it was used during the Civil War too, and during the Revolutionary War, so it has a long history. So it does have the typical design of forts back then. You have what they call the bastions, or before those. You know, I'll, I'll throw up a satellite image so you can see the shape of it from above. It's kind of hard to tell a little bit. I'll do that now. Oh yeah, oh, hold on a second. There you can see the other bastion down that way. I think a lot of times they had cannons mounted up there. I'm not sure if they actually had cannons here at this fort, but I wouldn't doubt it, the size of it. Oh, there's the entrance. All right, let me show you those satellite images. But you can see the advantages of having this huge stone wall to surround your fort. Because you know, recently, recently we were at Fort Necessity, and you saw those that log palisade wall. You know, it's just man. I'd much rather have this. All right, let's get inside. Todd's already in there. All right, let's go in together then. I think Todd's found some uh, reenactor type folk in here. Of course, these buildings are reconstructed. The original buildings were all torn down long ago. Wow. These would be like the barracks for the soldiers. Oh yeah, there's a cannon over there. Let's check that out. Yeah, just a smaller one. Nothing like the ones we saw recently at, down at a Fort Foot. Those 25 ton cannons. But still, you know, a formidable weapon if you're 
if it's facing you <laughs> and you're in its line of fire. Yep, there's Todd talking to some folks. It looks like we can go in these buildings too. But man, yeah, if you were, if I would so much more rather be in one of these forts than, than the ones that have the log palisades, man. You just feel a lot safer in here. And from what I read on the plaques here, one of the sections of these walls was actually torn down because um, they were obtained it after the French and Indian War. He had like a little farm inside here and he tore down one of the walls to build a stone barn, but they've obviously reconstructed that part. I'm not sure which section that was, but yeah, went through some tough times. But for the most part, it's been preserved, at least the, the walls. Yeah, the buildings were you know, pretty much torn down, pillaged, salvaged, different times. It, it's amazing that something like this was this far west in the frontier at that early period. Well, the original, the original wanted to be even farther west. The original plan for Fort Frederick was, was going to be built at a place called Old Town. But um, in the day when they were thinking of building Fort Frederick, um, they weren't sure that uh, because Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania all spent as much time fighting each other for where boundaries were going to be as they did the French and Indians. So when they were getting ready to build Fort Frederick, they weren't entirely sure that Old Town wasn't part of Virginia. So then they go, well, we got another spot, and it's where the Potomac comes down like this and goes that way. We'll set Fort Frederick there, and that's where we're, we're here in what today is Big Pool. Um, all right, so we're going to walk around a little bit, take a look at some of these buildings. It's like a giant farmhouse. Let's get the officer's kitchen. You can pause and read that if you want, but man, they, they got it all set up in here. It's pretty cool. Fireplace. Fake food. Yeah, it reminds me a lot when I filmed a Hopewell Furnace historic site. They had uh, all the buildings with, that were set up like it was back then. They had, they had plates full of like that fake plastic food too. It looks realistic though, but pretty cool in there. All right, let's go upstairs. All right, we'll go up. It sounds like they're going to do a, a firing demonstration soon too. Imagine, imagine if you lived here. That whole thing. Of course, the one we're on is similar to that one. This whole thing was your house. You have all your friends over. Women's quarters. All right. Bunk beds. Looks like there's no other rooms. I mean, there's plenty of rooms, but. There's a display down here. Oh, here we go. What's this one? Prisoners at Fort Fred at Fort Frederick. Oh wow, it's like a giant. I always thought there was someone in there. It's just a fake dude. There are fake a couple fake dudes sleeping in there. So this is where the prisoners would stay. Not too bad. Pretty cool. I love the old stuff by the fireplace there. All right, what's down here? Fort Frederick POW camp. Like I said, as always, you can pause and read more of that if you want. So it's the same room though. There's that fake. It's kind of creepy looking. So I'm gonna face that wall over there. I'm gonna pretend I see a French soldier who's about to fire at me, but he's in the middle of reloading. I've already reloaded, so I'm about to say, make ready. I'm gonna put my gun at full cock. I'm gonna bring my hammer stall down, and I'm gonna say, present. And then the last command is, fire. Ooh. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fire Musket Demonstration in 18th century style. All right, so we're going to go up here. They probably had something like this around the whole inside of the wall so that they could, you know, fire on the enemy or just see what the enemy was doing on the outside. Because if you can't see over these walls, that's probably not a good thing. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. You imagine standing up here and seeing... You know, the enemy forces out there. It's about three foot thick on top when you yeah. say. Yeah. About three foot wide. Close to it. Feels safe. <laughs> Better than there's palisade ones, log ones. Yeah. There's Naomi out there. Yeah, just talking to Todd, it's just, to me it's just fascinating to think that where I'm standing right now, here overlooking the wall, back during the French and Indian War, you know, Revolutionary War, Civil War, men stood here well, stood here as well, not necessarily, this probably wasn't here back then, but some other form of, you know, platform was probably here so they could see out over the wall. No doubt men patrolled, you could walk on top of this, I wouldn't doubt that men did that, it's just kind of interesting to think, you know, Throughout time, you're standing where I'm looking out now. You got know, some British soldier coming, or pioneer coming, looking out and see if any of the French or Indians are showing up out there. Pretty awesome. All right, so let's go check out the other one on the other side here. Looks like they got a lot of open doors for displays. Maybe we'll find some more fake, fake people. I don't really like mannequins, to be honest. I think most of you know I don't like clowns. And for some reason, I don't like mannequins either. They're kind of creepy. All right, we'll start at this end. There's a ton of stuff. Captain's quarters. This will probably be pretty posh. Gets his own bed. Room with a fireplace, man. I'd love to have an old fireplace again like that. All right, I'll take the captain's quarters. <laughs> All right, what's we got here? This is the oh, captain's office. So he gets a sleeping spot in an office, and also a fireplace. All right, pretty cool. What do we got here? Junior officers' quarters. Probably have to share. No, he gets his own bed too. Reminds me a lot when I was at Fort Niagara too. Of course, Fort Niagara was oh, quite a bit more awesome because the building was original, but this is, has a similar feel to it. There's no sign for this, but it looks like a dining type room. Oh, I'd love to see that old map up there. All right, pretty cool. Ready to move in. <laughs> oh yeah, here it says the Grand Hall. You know what? This is actually still used today, this kind of, this concept. Yeah, here's the Grand Hall. Yeah, this one doesn't have a name to it either. It looks like it's someone's own personal eating. Oh, it says it over here. Junior officers' quarters. So I guess this is where they, it's another place for them. It's that set up so they can eat too. I love how each room has a fireplace. Wow. Armory. Oh yeah, there they are. All the muskets lined up. Black powder. Got the lead bullets in the over there. Wow. And the King's Storehouse. Maybe some whiskey barrels back there. 
Oh, you can see the original. There's some steps back there. All right, let's go upstairs. Oh, there's the well. Not sure if that's original or not. We got your storeroom and Cherokee gifts. These are probably things they would trade with the Indians. Yeah, there's the blankets, things like that. Uh -oh. Surgeon's quarters. Oh boy. So we can see the tools in here. Oh no, we know, no tools. I thought they might have the, the tools that they used. It's got a wig on the bed there. Bed post. All right, I thought they might have. Yeah, like I said, I thought we have all the tools that they use, like for amputations and stuff. Hospital furnishings. Oh, back there are the tools. Sorry, back on the table back there, are all the tools they would use. Let's zoom in. Yeah, not where I'd want to be. Beds don't look too comfortable either. All right, not my favorite room. Yeah, I think this just looks into the same room here from a different angle. I think I think one of the French, one of the French got in. They're not guarding the, they're not guarding the gate well enough. So. <laughs> That's Todd down there. Yes, if you get a chance to visit this place, by all means do so, it's pretty cool. This is a Saturday, this is June 19th, so there were the, several of those reenactors here. One, the one guy is very knowledgeable, and there's the other guy that did the uh, firing demonstration, which is pretty cool. I know we just saw a bunch of that in a previous video at Fort Edwards, with a little battle, but this was much more up close. You could feel and smell the gun going off, or the musket. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome place. All right, so once again, that'll be it. Back there's Todd again. So remember to check out his channel, Appalachian History, History Detectives. Detectives. And like I said, like I said, they're putting out those videos now of the, the fort they found, yep. Fort Upper Track, which are pretty cool. So him and Aqua Trigger, so make sure he's in the frame. So go check their stuff out. As always, thanks for coming along, and uh, see you next video.